of a family that I've ever had. I thank you so much for everything you do for us and the, and the kindness that you've shown my family and I. If you've got your Bibles, please, would you turn with me to Luke chapter 10. I'll read verse 38 through 42. Luke chapter 10, verses 38 through 42. The word says, Now it came to pass as they went that he entered into a certain village, and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was cumbered about much serving and came to him, said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister hath left me to serve alone? Bid her therefore that she help me. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things, but the one thing is needful. And Mary hath chosen that good part, which shall not be taken away from her. For a few moments tonight, I just want to speak on the topic, the posture of a worshiper. The posture of a worshiper. Would you bow your heads, please? Heavenly Father, we come to you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the spirit and the presence of God that we felt in this service. But Lord, we ask you, Lord, that your spirit would tarry here. And Lord, anoint this message. Anoint this message, Lord, that's burned in my spirit and pricked my heart. For it, for before I can preach a word, it has to be preached to me first. The true preacher's got to preach it to me first for I can deliver. You've got to pour into me for I can pour out, Lord. So Lord, pour out of me tonight what you poured in. Anoint me, Lord, to preach what thus saith the Lord. Anoint these here to hear and to receive every word that you would want them to hear and receive. And God will give you the praise and the glory. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. amen. And amen. If we are to experience the fullness of Christ and his glory, it will not come through religion or a set of rules. Rather, it will come through the heart of worship. Revival only comes when we come back to the cross and allow the cross to bring us back to a posture of worship. David would say this, give unto the Lord the glory do unto his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Every move of God that has ever sweeped across this world, that's ever done anything for the kingdom of God, had two things in common. It was a pointed, pointing back to the cross and it was a pointing to worship. It was, a, it was a heart change in the mind of the believer. It was a heart change in the, in the heart of the sinner. It was a posture change, so to speak. Every move of God. You, 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 uh, you study the great awakenings. There was a strong fervor of worship. Yeah. And, and, and a strong preaching of Jesus. Crucified and born and, and raised again. In Azusa Street, there was intense worship. Intense worship. You read that book. Some of you have read it. I've got a copy at home I've read. And, it, and people would walk in the doors and they would get so afraid because of the sheer force and the intenseness of the worship. They had never seen anything like that. They didn't know what it was about. Yeah. And during the 60s and 70s, there was a, a movement called the Jesus Movement. Millions of teens and young men and women trade a life of drugs, perversion, for a life devoted to Jesus in worship. Most of them were hippies who had been a part of Woodstock. If you ever, uh, you young people won't know what Woodstock is. I wasn't alive during the time, but I've studied up on it. It was a sinful, sinful, sinful concert and time. It was devoted totally to the devil and, and sin and self. And they would be around there uh, uh, naked, drugs and drunk and doing all kinds of uh, uh, immorality. And it was a total, uh, 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 it was a total change from what God wants us to be like. It was changing the nature of who God created you to be. 
But then God began to form a move. And these hippies who once sat out there and sang Jimi Hendrix and sang all these songs that, uh, that praised the devil, now they began to praise the Lord. And the churches around the area, they didn't like the hippies. They didn't smell like they smelt. They didn't look like they looked. They didn't worship like they worshiped. Because I'm telling you, when you really get saved and God really changes your heart, your worship's going to change. It's got to change. And the church looked at them crazy. The church said they're not welcome here because of how they look in their past. That kind of people isn't allowed here. That kind isn't allowed. Oh, but they weren't ready for the worship. The worship that they had. They weren't ready. But when a heart falls in love with Jesus, the worship will render uh, 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 to Him worship worthy to Him. If we're to have revival, we've got to put ourselves in, a posture, in the posture of a worshiper. You cannot receive revival if you don't worship the Lord. You can't receive revival if you don't praise His holy name. You cannot receive from heaven if you don't bless His name. You can't. It's not possible. One of the songs that came out of the Jesus movement was a song called, Oh Lord, You're Beautiful. Yeah. It was written by Keith Green. And the words of the song go like, I want you to hear the words of this song. Hear, hear the heart of this man. Hear his heart for worship. Listen, Oh Lord, You're Beautiful. Your face is all I seek. For when your eyes are on this child, your grace abounds to me. I want to take your word and shine it all around. But first... Help me just to live it, Lord. Yeah. What a, that's a sermon right there. And when I'm doing well, help me to never seek a crown, for my reward is giving glory to you. Yeah. Oh, Lord, please light the fire that once burnt bright and clear. Replace the lamp of my first love that burns with holy fear. I want to take your word and shine it all around, but just help me live it, Lord. And when I'm doing well, help me to never seek a crown for your, my reward is giving glory to you. What a, that's a sermon. Amen. That's the heart of somebody who God changed. Yes. He said, Keith Green said, God changed him from a life of drugs. I, I go to the God's house of hope and I preach and I see people so devoted to God. I see them. They have so much fervor and so much, so much love for Jesus. It almost scare you. At the love they've got. Yeah. But when you've met the master. Your worship. Will be the worship that's due unto him. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You cannot be saved. And sit on that pew. Or that seat. And think that sitting there with your arms crossed, sitting on your good for nothings, is good enough praise for God. I'm telling you right now, He does not sit there when you show up. He doesn't say, "Well, look, oh, they blessed me today." No, you don't come to bless. He don't come to bless you. You come to bless God, and then He will bless you. That's the, that's the way of the kingdom. You praise Him, He'll bless you. You praise Him, He'll open up heaven. You bless His holy name, He'll send His angels and watch over you. You praise Him, He will do what He says He will do. We find here in our scripture text, two women, Martha and Mary. I want to really speak tonight on the posture of Mary. The posture of a worshiper. Well, I'm going to try to, if time allows. I'm going to show you three places in the Word of God where Mary gave it all. Mary gave it all to Jesus. In this story, we find that they invite Jesus in. We find in John chapter 11, which I'll get to in a minute, that Jesus loved this family. He loved them. Oh, he spent so much time. Bethany, the city where they lived, was only about two miles from Jerusalem. So he could go there pretty easily. I'm sure he visited very, very often as he would go on his journeys. And he began to really get real keen with these people. And it says that Mary, Martha, received him into her home, an invitation. And her sister Mary, which sat at Jesus' feet, heard his words. And Martha began to get a little troubled. She was in the kitchen making sure the food was cooked. Making sure the house was clean. 
And it says that Mary just sat there listening to Jesus. And Martha came in and she looked at Jesus and she said, we just read it. Lord, here I am serving you. Do you not care that my sisters left me all alone to do all this work? Would you bid her to come help me? We find first that Mary desired above all to learn. To learn. Mary recognized the fact that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Mary understood that it was essential to serve. She understood that, but she understood it was more essential and of a necessity for her to sit and listen to the words of the Master. In John 6, 27, it says, Labor not for the meat that perishes, but for the meat which endures unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you. For Him hath God the Father sealed. Mary knew it was important to serve. Don't get Martha mixed up. Don't look bad at Martha. It's okay to serve. Some of you in here serve God with fervency. You work on the worship team. You help clean the church. You help with the tithes and the offering and the finances. You help with other things. You help with gathering together. All these get-togethers that we have to make sure people bring food and, and such as the like. But don't ever get caught up like Mary and serve and miss out on the mark of what God really wants. The posture of a worshiper isn't walking out and preaching the gospel. The posture of a worshiper is on your feet at the Master listening to His words. Listening to His words. Listening. Spurgeon said the way to get the revival is to begin at the Master's feet. You must go there with Mary and afterwards you may work with Martha. You shouldn't be on this praise team if you're not spending time with Jesus. You shouldn't have any role in the church if you're not sitting down at the Master's feet and listening to His words. If He's not giving to you, you can't give out. If He doesn't pour into you, you can't pour in. You ain't got nothing in your stinking body worth to give. The only thing you can give is what Jesus puts in. That's right, man. If you deal with the finances, you shouldn't even deal with the finances. Unless you've been sitting at the Master's feet. Remember Judas. And don't you say, well that's never going to happen to me, honey. Sir, you better think twice. Because Satan's sly and he's slick. You better make sure to get to to the feet of Jesus. And listen to His words. She was quick to learn. And you're never, I don't care how long you, I don't care how long you serve the Lord. I don't care how long you study this word. I don't care how many degrees you got. You're never going to hear enough from the master. You're never going to learn enough. There's always some manna falling from heaven. You just got to go to it and get it. Martha was cumbered. That word cumbered means distracted. That's what that word means. She was distracted with the things that she thought she had to get done, which in turn brought stress and frustration. That's why so many ministers fall away from this pulpit and never preach again because they didn't get at the feet of Jesus. They got frustrated by trying to preach and never seeing nothing happen. You want to see something happen? Then get with the Master. This is why Jesus said, Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon me, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I'm meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The best teacher you can ever have is Jesus Himself. Don't you listen to this preacher if it doesn't come from the Word of God. Don't you take everything that we say. You've got to get to the feet of Jesus. You've got to get there yourself. If if all you get is here on Sunday morning, you're not getting enough. You're not getting enough of Jesus. You've got to sit at His feet. You've got to learn. If Martha had been sitting at His feet, maybe she would have heard Him say, 
For this reason I say to you, do not be worried about your life as to what you will eat or what you will drink. But seek first the kingdom of God and all these things shall be added unto you. Don't worry about your finances. If you get at the feet of Jesus, He'll tell you how to fix your bills. If you want to, and don't worry about how you're going to pay that. Uh, go buy those groceries. Get at the feet of Jesus and He'll bring you some groceries. If you're worried about your family, don't worry. Just get at the feet of Jesus and call on His name and He'll draw them. It ain't your job to do it. Don't worry about it. Get at His feet and learn of Him and let Him do His job. Man. Jeremiah understood what it was like to sit and learn of the Lord. The Spirit spoke to him and said, Rise and go down to the potter's house. There I will cause thee to hear my words. Some of the reasons why we can't hear the words of the Lord is sometimes it's not that you're sitting at His feet. Some of you are sitting at His feet, but you need to allow the Lord to break some things off of you so you can hear a little better. Let the potter break some things off. Let the potter mold you. Let the potter teach you. Let him teach you. Let him teach you. What's so interesting is this was the posture of the Jewish scholars when they would learn under a rabbi. They sit at his feet. That's why Paul said in Acts chapter 22 verse 3, he said he was brought up at the feet of Gamaliel. Gamaliel was the top Pharisee of the Pharisees. They would sit at the feet. Every time somebody would teach the Word of God, they'd sit at his feet. Every time when Jesus would talk, they'd sit at his feet. That's why it's so important to sit at the feet of Jesus. Sit at his feet and learn of him. This custom was so, so prevalent in those days. To sit and listen. As I was praying this afternoon, I got down on my knees. I said, Lord, I'm going to sit here. I'm going to sit here, Lord. <clears throat> and the Lord told me, He said, you see what happens when you sit? I said, what, Lord? He said, you're in a place of vulnerability. You can't protect yourself. You can't fight for yourself. You're at the mercy of others. You cannot help yourself in a seated position like this on the floor. Because when you lay down at somebody's feet, it's a sign of submission. Mary was showing Jesus, I submit to you. I submit to your teaching. You're the one. Look, listen to me. <clears throat> Peter and him would say, where can we go, Lord? Yeah. You're the one who has eternal life. You're the one who has the words of eternal life. Where can we go? You changed our life. Your words brought life to us. Why would you not sit at His feet? Why would you not learn of the Master? Oh, you're so quick to turn on CNN and Fox News and every other, and learn about everything going on in the government and learn about everything going on in the world. And you're so worried about the government and the, and the nation, you can't think straight. Don't worry. Get at His feet and learn of the Master and everything else will fall in line exactly how it's supposed to. Get at His feet. Get at His feet. It wasn't that she was neglecting her sister. It wasn't that she was neglecting her work. Mary wasn't neglecting any of that. She was just putting it in its proper place. Some of you need to get your priorities fixed. If your morning coffee comes before sitting at the feet of Jesus... You might want to put on the pot a little later. If, if, if your cereal has to get ate before you sit at the feet of Jesus, maybe you might want to just fix the bowl a little later. If you've got to fix your bacon and sauce before you can sit down in Jesus, maybe if you've got to get to work before you can sit down with Jesus, if you've got to sit in that lazy boy before you can sit with Him, you've got to get to Jesus first. Yeah. It's not about neglecting anything. It's just putting it in its proper place. You're showing Jesus. You take full authority in my life. You're first and foremost. Yeah. You're first and foremost. I know I've got a job to do. I know I've got a work i got to go do. I know I've got family i got to take care of. But Jesus, I'm sitting with you first. Because I know I can't be the father i got to be, the husband i got to be, the worker i got to be, anything i got to be if I don't sit at your feet and learn of you. Mary was saying, Lord, I can't be anything if I don't sit at your feet and learn. Don't be ashamed to say I ain't got it all figured out. Sit at his feet and say, Jesus, pour it in. 
Pour it in, Lord. If you find a verse of Scripture you don't understand, don't go to some commentary and figure it out. Just sit at His feet. He'll tell you. Just sit at His feet. He'll let you know what it says. If you don't know how, why you're not getting an answered prayer, just sit at His feet. He'll tell you why you're not getting an answered prayer. He can tell you. He can teach you His Word. The posture of a worshiper is sitting down at His feet and learning His Word. Then in John chapter 11, you can go with me there. John chapter 11. We find another occurrence of Mary. This is a very familiar part of scripture. This is probably after the occurrence of her sitting at his feet, listening to his words. Jesus is walking around Jerusalem and he gets a call. The one whom you love, he's sick and he's dying. And you'd think that Jesus would go immediately, but you know the story, he didn't. He waited, waited four days. When he got there, Martha met him. She said, Lord, if you'd been here, if you'd been here, my brother would have died. If you'd been here, maybe he'd still be here with us. Jesus said, Woman, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever live and believe in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said, Oh, I know you are the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. She went and called her sister Mary. And what sweet words she told Mary. She said, The Master, He calleth for thee. Wouldn't you like to hear those words? While Martha expressed her disbelief in the Lord, Mary expressed her belief in Him. You can see the relationship that Him and Mary had when Martha, like I said, told Him, told her, the Master's come, He calls for you. The Word says she ran. She took tail out of that house. She left those things behind. She left all those mourners. Because back in those days, if somebody died, they paid somebody to cry. She left those mourners behind. She ran out before Jesus ever got to there. He, she ran out and she fell at His feet, the Word said. Oh, just like she did when she listened to His words. And she fell at His feet. She was showing a sign of surrender. Another posture of a worshiper. The sign of a surrendering heart. When we surrender our life, will, and emotions to the Lord in radical worship, the heaven's ears are open and the gates swing wide. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. Whosoever shall find his life, he will lose it. Oh, yes. If you, if you try to save your life, if you try to keep that old way, if you try to choke back that praise, You're not going to get anything. Mary wasn't worried about what everybody else said. Mary knew in whom she believed. And even though she said, Lord, if you'd been here, he would have lived. That wasn't unbelief like Martha. No, she was saying, Lord, I'm falling at your mercy, Lord. If you'd been here, he would have lived. But I really believe her heart was crying. Lord, I know even if you if you are late, you can still do it. She was in a time of desperation. She fell at his feet. What a worshiper. What a worshiper. Oh, we find this concept of falling at his feet in surrender and worship all throughout the Gospels. We find it with Jairus. When he came, when his daughter was sick, the word says he fell at his feet. The certain woman, the Syrophoenician woman, when she came to ask Jesus to heal her daughter, she fell at his feet. The man of Gadara, when the disciples, when the, when the people of the city came, he was usually somebody possessed of devils out of his mind. The Bible says he walked around sick and out of his head. But when they came, they found him at Jesus' feet with clothes on and with a well mind. He fell at his feet with a worship. 
the one with the issue of blood, when she reached out and grabbed the hem of his garment, he turned around. She trembling fell at his feet. Hallelujah. The one leper that came back, he healed ten. Nine didn't come back, but the one did. And he fell at his feet. Oh! The many who were sick and afflicted and possessed in Matthew 15, 30, it said they all came to Him and fell at His feet. Oh, the sinful woman of Luke chapter 7 who anointed His feet with her tears and washed them. It said she fell at His feet. The disciples, when He was resurrected, they fell at His feet. And Apostle John on the Isle of Patmos, he said, when I saw Him, I fell at His feet as a dead man. That's the posture of a worship. It means surrender. It means falling down at His feet and surrendering. Martha didn't fall down at His feet and surrender, but Mary did. She ran out that home and fell at His feet. She said, if anybody can do it, Lord, I know you can. If anybody, I know, I've seen you. I've seen you raise the dead. I've seen you heal the sick. I've watched them fall on their face in front of you. And I know you can do it. She was surrendering to Him. She was surrendering to Jesus. Some of you need to surrender to Jesus. You may have surrendered to Him in salvation, but you need to surrender to Him in worship. People will call you crazy, but so be it. Surrender in worship. Either you fall at His feet or you'll be put under His feet. I think that's need repeating Either you fall at His feet or He'll put you under His feet. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 25, it says, For He must reign till He has put all enemies under His feet. Yeah. And the Bible says if you're not with God, you're an enemy of God. Oh, yes. I know that's not popular preaching. That won't put me on TBN. But I'm telling you what, it's the truth. If you don't worship Him here, you're going to worship Him one day. Because the Bible says every knee bow and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. But it'll be too late to worship Him then. Oh, bless His name. Psalm 110 and 1. Hallelujah. It says, the Lord said unto my Lord, sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. If you don't fall at his feet, one day you're going to be up under his feet and he'll crush you. He will crush you. Either you fall on the rock and let it crush you. And either you fall on the rock and it crush you or you allow the rock to fall on you and it dash you to pieces. Don't let him dash you to pieces. Fall at his feet. Fall broken at his feet. You want to get heaven to listen to you? Fall at His feet. You want to get heaven to hear? Fall at His feet. If you've got some stuff that won't let go, you've got a devil that just won't let loose, fall at His feet. Oh, yes. Do I need to say that again? Fall at His feet. If you've got some finances that won't budge, fall at His feet. If you've got some family members that won't let let go, fall at His feet. I'm telling you. Fall at His feet. Fall. He'll catch you. Just fall. Yeah. Fall at his feet. All these people fell. It's fell. Worship. A lot of times in prayer, I found myself a lot just on my face. Prostrate. Just surrendered. Lord, thy will be done. Just surrender. Satan doesn't want you to surrender. That's not in his image. He didn't surrender. He didn't fall at his feet. Fall at his feet. Submit to him. Submit. Submit and fall. Some of you in here are troubled in your mind. Just fall at his feet. Some of you in here don't know how you're going to fall at his feet. Give yourself over to Him. Worship. Praise. We know the story. Jesus, He raises Lazarus from the dead. And we find in John chapter 12, we find a peculiar little piece of Scripture. We find a party going on. 
It's at Simon the leper's house. And it's six days before the Passover. Jesus is getting ready to be crucified. And it says that they made him supper. Guess who's serving? Martha. Lazarus is sitting at the table. Could you imagine that? Jesus in the middle, a leper right here, and a dead man over here. <laughs> I bet that made some Pharisees mad. We find the third, third posture of worship in Mary. She comes. She's got all these people around. The Bible says she brings a pound of ointment. Very costly, John said. Judas says it cost about 300 pence. 300 pence in those days was a year's wage. Just think of how much you make a year. Just think about it. She came, said she anointed the feet of Jesus. And wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the odor of her ointment. And we find that, G that Judas had indignation rise up in him. We see through the life of Mary that she's very intentional about the worship she gives. Very intentional. She doesn't haphazardly worship. She's very particular on how she worships. She sat at his feet to learn. You know, sometimes we need to sit and be quiet yeah. and just learn. Sometimes we need to come in desperation and cry out to Him and fall at His feet. But sometimes we need to just come and do what she did and honor Him. She knelt down to that ointment. She broke it open. And I mean, she doused it on him. When I read this statement here in this verse, it said, In the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. If somebody ever got a touch of God to come honor Jesus, you would feel the odor. Yeah. Just fill the room. Yes. yes. Have you ever worshipped Jesus in your private, in a private closet? private room and you could just feel. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. You could just feel it. Yes. You could you know that heaven just entered the room. Yeah. You knew that something just shifted. Yeah. I've been in services before where it was dry as a bone. But then all of a sudden it's like something just rushed in the room. Yeah. You could feel it. Yes, you want to know why? Because somebody honored Jesus. Somebody honored Him. And it filled the room. His presence began to fill the room. And if somebody, if somebody could just touch Jesus in here and honor Him, all the things that we could see done. Yes. Much of the modern church, you know what they are? They're Marthas. They're serving. Yeah. But they're not sitting. Yeah. They're Judases. They're serving. But they're stealing. Be a Mary. Let the odor fill the room. Let the odor fill the room. She was intentional with her praise and worship. She isn't ashamed to give Jesus the praise that's worthy unto him. He said, if you be ashamed of me in front of man, I will be ashamed of you. You deny me in front of men, I will deny you. I'm telling you, you can't sit there. You cannot sit there. Right. Oh, Jesus. I told the jail the other night, I think it was two, last Tuesday. I told them, I looked at him, I said, I don't know whether y'all are saved or not. That's between you and Jesus. But I said, I'll tell you what, a saved man is not going to sit here and not give God praise. I am telling you, you well, brother, I can't stand up and run like you do and shout. Well, you've got a mouth, give God some glory. You've got some hands, lift them up. You've got something to give Him. Well, let it out. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise you, the Lord. Praise Him. 
Praise Him. Oh, yes. Bless His name. If He saved you, praise Him. That's right. Praise Him. Some people, they're so, that's why you don't see them come back on Sunday night. They've got their serving. I came, Lord. I came and served the church. I sat on the seat. I helped the membership roll this morning. Lord, I hope you bless me. That is not how it goes. If you're, t- if you're a true worshiper, you'll come back Sunday, Sunday night, Wednesday, Tuesday night prayer meeting, Monday night prayer meeting, Thursday night revival, Friday night revival. You're going to be worshiping Him every chance you get because because you know without him you're nothing. Yeah. Yes. Amen. Mary knew without Jesus she wasn't anything. Mary knew without him she wasn't anything. Surrounded by family and friends, she walks in, sits at his feet once again. But this time she breaks that expensive bottle open. Oh, she put in a year's wage into it. That's a lot of money. But she gave it all. She wasn't worried about what anybody said. She wasn't worried about the financial consequences. She wasn't worried about all the monetary means. She was worried about giving Him honor and glory. Some of you need to quit worrying about your job. Whether or not you're going to make it up. Or whether or not you need to give this much. Just honor Him. If He says give it, give it. If He says do it, do it. If He says honor Him, honor Him. I'm telling you, everything you give to the Lord, He's going to owe no man. You're not going to give Him more than He can't give back. If you give Him a thousand, He'll give you a hundred thousand. If you give Him a praise, He'll give you a blessing. If you give Him your life, He'll give you eternal life. Hallelujah. Oh! Whatever you give Him, He's going to give something in return. He's going to owe no man anything. Whatever you give, he's able to give back. Yes, he is. You give him your praise, he'll honor it. You honor him, he'll honor you. It's just that simple. You sit on your good for nothings and do nothing, he's going to do nothing. Because he's going to owe you nothing. So you give him nothing, you give him nothing. Have mercy. You give him your praise, he gives you himself. You give him your praise, he fills the room. You see that? She gave him a little box of all. He filled the room. He filled the room. Here's Judas over here. <laughs> you could have sold that and given it to the poor trying to be all holy. <laughs> John says he wasn't worried about doing that. He cared not for the poor. That's what John says. Yeah. See, John was close to Jesus. He cared not for the poor. But because he was a thief. Some people look at us and we praise God. And the only thing they've got is indignation in their heart. I've heard people tell me the reason why they don't come to this church is because I know what those people really are. And they want to get up there and worship God like that. How, how stupid are you? You need to be here right where we are. We're not down here at the feet of Jesus saying we're perfect. We're down here at the feet of Jesus saying we're not perfect. And we need you. And you need Jesus much more than we do. Another message that won't get you on TBN. (laughs) Mary's gift was remarkably humble. Because when a guest entered the room, usually the guest's feet were washed with water. And the guest's head was anointed with a dab of oil. No, she busted the whole thing open. <laughs> I was sitting at the house today. I, I sat in this all day. Beth said, you going to sit in this suit all day long? I'm comfortable in it. It ain't no big deal. Why waste another pair of clothes? Just to put them in. So I'm sitting there getting ready. When I get ready, I'm already ready. <laughs> Somebody shout glory. Hallelujah. I was sitting there and I looked down and my shoe, the sole of my shoe is coming undone. And I, these, are, these shoes are only a year old. And I said, I must have danced right out of my shoes this morning. <laughs> I ain't scared of you can praise now. I, said, 
And somebody comes to me and says, we were thinking about coming to the Catholic Chapel. I said, well, I'm warning, he's Pentecostal church. That's right. Speaking in tongues? I said, speaking in tongues. <laughs> I said, we get all nine gifts of the Spirit out right in this church. Speaking in tongues is the least of your fears. <laughs> You got two men, me and my brother-in-law came down to sleep. We're going to dance for Jesus. That dancing won't get me on soul train. Will it get me to heaven? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory. Hallelujah. I'm going to give him the glory that's worthy. I was sitting there watching that football game last night. It got close to, I don't know if any of y'all watch football. With the Chargers of the Jaguars for playing. And the Chargers just went unleashed on the Jack. 27 to nothing by about halftime. Jaguars climbed their self all the way back, won the game. Glass, uh, you just, if you're not a football fan, you just can't understand. How <laughs> they just make your heart just. What's up, my friend? Come on. But the announcers, they said this. They said, I just chuckled in myself. That's what they said. They said, it felt, they were talking about how, how they, were at, they were at Jacksonville. That's where the place of the Jaguars played, home crowd. And it was 27 nothing. They said, wow, it felt like church in here a few minutes ago. But now it's rambunctious. I thought, you ain't been to the right yeah. church, buddy. <laughs> You must go to a Catholic church. Hell no. Come on. <laughs> you must go to some Baptist churches around here. Hallelujah. Woo. Lord, get me off this rabbit trail. Hallelujah. Before I get kicked off the stage. Hallelujah. Woo. Her radical worship was mocked and ridiculed by Judas, who instead had a sinful disposition. Sounds a lot like Esau. A lot like Esau. You know what Esau did? Oh, he traded his birthright, his spiritual blessing for monetary things. He traded his spiritual blessing for a little bit of food. Looking diligently, lest any man fell of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness spring up and upon trouble you and thereby be defiled. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person. As Esau who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. There's so many people in this world, they sell their spiritual blessing for one lifetime on this earth. Never giving Him the praise and the worship that's due unto Him. Never living for the Lord like they should. And they just go ahead and just spend their life and waste it. They waste it. They care about temporal things more than eternal. Jesus said, for where your treasure is, that's where your heart will be. We see Mary once again, once again serving and Simon, Simon opening up his house. But we don't see much worship going on until Mary enters the scene. Mary anointed the feet of Jesus in essence because she was saying, I know you are the Messiah and you will rise again. Listen to this. This is what Charles Spurgeon said. I love Charles Spurgeon. He's such a good Bible teacher. He says they carried him to the tomb, but he walked out on his own feet. <laughs> That's why she anointed his feet. She was saying, you might get carried to the tomb, but you're walking out. <laughs> Hallelujah. She was giving him that honor. Yeah. Oh. Same thing you do when you come worship this place. Why are you worshiping here? Lord, I know you're coming back for me. I know you're coming back for us. We're just here to give you glory. We're just here to give you honor. That's why Paul would say, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel. Yeah. Hallelujah. We go and tell the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. I'll tell you something else. It goes right along with what I was talking about here. When she let her hair down in Jewish culture, that was uncouth. Women didn't let their hair down. It was a lack of respect. Total lack of respect. 
But she let that hair down and wiped his feet. She wasn't worried about what Jerusalem said. Some of you need to quit worrying about what the church down the road says. Just worship Jesus. Quit worrying about what the person sitting next to you says. Just worship Jesus. Quit worrying about what everybody else says. Just worship Jesus. Get in his feet and worship him. I don't dance for you. I care that you like it or not. I'm dancing for Jesus. John is the loudest person in here. I think they can hear him all the way to Mitchell. So he don't care. He's shouting for Jesus. I like it. Yes. Get loud. Yeah. I like it when they get we were talking we were talking the other day, I said, I like it when it gets weird. Yeah. <laughs> you know why I like it when it gets weird? Because I lose all control yeah. and Jesus is in control. Yeah. I like it when it gets weird. Worship him. Yeah. Worship. Amen. Oh Jesus. Some of you need to get out of your comfort zone, just worship. Worship. Yeah. Worship. Thank you, Hallelujah. I'm getting ready to close up. I was sitting here and I asked Kyle to sing this song because, oh my, I was sitting there getting ready last night and I just had my headphones in listening to music and all of a sudden, lo and behold, this song just come on and I thought, and it just struck me at the second line because the second line, I was like, oh my goodness, this is definitely the Spirit of the Lord. I asked him to sing that song, Nothing Else. Listen to the words for he sings. It says, I'm caught up in your presence. Listen to the heart. Jesus, I just want to sit here at your feet. (laughs) I'm caught up in this holy moment. I never want to leave. Oh, I'm not here for blessings. Jesus, you don't owe me anything. More than anything you can do. I just want you. I'm sorry. When I've just gone through the motions. I'm sorry. When I just sang another song. Take me back. To where we started. And I opened up my heart to you. Hallelujah. I'm coming back to where we started. When I first felt your love. You're all that matters, Jesus. You're all that matters. That's the posture of a worshiper. That's the posture of Mary. She gave it all for him. And coincidentally, listen to this. She was the only one not found at his tomb. Because she knew When you sit at the feet of Jesus, you'll know him. You'll know him. You'll know his character. You'll know his nature. You'll know him. Paul said that I may know him. And the power of his resurrection. The fellowship of his sufferings. Being made conformable unto his death. That I may know him. The posture of a worshiper. This church is entering into a season like you've never seen. Most of our Sunday mornings was just worship. Interesting, huh? But worship isn't all about jumping up and shouting and jumping over the seats. Worship is about an attitude. A hard attitude. Jesus, I want to be taught by you. I want to surrender to you. And I want to honor you. That's the best prayer you can pray other than salvation. Lord, teach me your word. You know what David said? Your word is like honey to my lips. You get taught by the Lord, it's sweeter than any sweet you ever get. Surrender and honor. Kyle, would you come please, buddy? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. (coughs) This altar call is very simple. 
I do want to open up the floor if some of you aren't saved. If you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, the time is now. The atmosphere is ready for you to receive Jesus Christ. You can come up here and receive Him. This altar call is very simple tonight. I just want you to get in a posture of a worshiper. I want you to get like Mary and say, it doesn't matter what anybody else thinks. It doesn't matter what my neighbor thinks. It doesn't matter what the world thinks. I just want to worship you. Church, we're getting so close to a breakthrough in this region. You're so close for you poor to see a transformation. So close. But it only happens when you get a relationship with Jesus. When you get into a posture of worship. When you say, Lord, I want to be taught by you. I want to honor you. I want to surrender. However that is tonight. However that looks to you. Do it. Do it. Find you a place. And reach out to Jesus. Reach out to Jesus. As we sing this song. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just want to sit here at your feet And I'm caught up in this only moment I never want to leave Hallelujah And I'm not here for blessing Hallelujah When I've come with my agenda, I'm sorry. When I forgot that you're enough, take me back to where we started. And I've opened up my heart to you. And I'm caught up. Like jumping and shouting, all that kind of stuff.
stuff, but there ain't nothing more precious than this moment right now. This is a holy moment that's taking place. You know what's taking place right now in your heart and in your life? You're consecrating yourself. You're consecrating your heart to Jesus. You're saying, Lord, I surrender my life. I worship You. You alone are the giver of life. You alone can supply my need. You alone can heal my disease. That's what you're saying. You rest in this moment. Rest. This is how you get to hear His voice. It's just resting in Him. Resting in Him. It took me a year to get to the place to where I could say, Jesus, forgive me. I've been a Martha all these years. I served you in some capacity in every way in the church. But I didn't worship. I didn't worship. I finally had to say, Lord, give me the spirit of Mary. That'll worship. That'll fall at your feet. You young people, I, I, gotta, I just... You just got to understand, this is where you get success. This is where you find satisfaction. You sit at his feet. I know it's hard to be a teenager. You've got it all the way to the world on your shoulders. But this is where he takes the load. Even us older people, we go through trouble too. The Bible says, don't get weary in well doing, lest you faint and reap not. He doesn't want you to faint. <laughs> you want to know how you faint? Don't faint. You fall at his feet. You get, you get strength for the morrow. He said, they shall not have the wings of eagles. They will soar. Hallelujah. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. This is how you get that. The posture of a worshiper. You're reaping when you're sowing things in the Spirit right now that you will reap in coming days. For the Bible says if you sow to the Spirit, you will reap things of the Spirit. If you sow to the flesh, you will reap things of the flesh. And the flesh brings death. I don't know about you, but I don't want death. I don't want death to my finances. I don't want death to my family. I don't want death to my health. I don't want death to my joy, my peace, my mind. We read it, the Bible says... Mary and Martha was cumbered down with so much weight, so much weight, because her focus was off the, off the real thing. And he said, that's why this will not be taken away from her. Martha, I know you've got things to do, but I ain't, I'm not making her get up. She's doing exactly what she needs to do. She's getting strength for the journey ahead. Some of you in this place, you're asking God to heal you. Well, this is where you ask Him. You're asking for a miracle. This is where it happens.
when I'm going through the motions and I'm sorry. Hallelujah. I'll just sing another song. Take me back to show the story. <laughs> oh, glory to God. Lord, I'm sorry when I've come with my tent. I'm sorry. Just say that to me. When I forgot your love, take me back to where we started. Oh, yes. Caught up in his presence. Oh, yes. And I just want to sit here at your feet. And I'm caught up in this holy moment. Oh, Jesus. And I never want to leave. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, I'm not here for blessing. <laughs> Jesus, you don't owe me anything more than anything that you can do. I just want you. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, I come to you, Lord. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Precious Jesus. Lord, I know some of us got so much to worry about. We've got unsaved loved ones that's on their way to hell. We're concerned. We've got finances that's went to the tank and we're concerned. We've got health issues and we're concerned. Lord, we've got a world that's going to hell in a handbasket. Lord, it's getting worse every day and we're concerned. Doesn't look like it's going to get any better, Lord, and we're concerned. But Jesus, don't let us be like Martha, Lord. Don't let us stay in the mindset of do this and do that and get so caught up in the world and the things that we're doing how we get so weighted down with everything that we forget what you came to do for us. And that was to give us a relationship. Lord, you didn't open up that veil for us to get in. You opened up that veil for you to get out. You opened up that veil for you to enter into us. You desire a relationship with us. And Lord, forgive us. Forgive us tonight when we have wandered and rambled so much that we forgot just to sit down, take some time, and just listen to you. Jesus, I know you're going to do marvelous things in the coming days. We're going to see people saved, delivered, healed. Satan destroyed. We're going to see bondages broken. We're going to see loved ones come home. We're going to see, oh Lord, the things we're going to see. But Jesus, don't let us get caught up in the working. Let us get caught up in the worshiping. Let us worship you, Lord, with everything that we've got. Let us not get lazy on our worship. Let us get radical in our worship. Let us worship more than anything. For God, you created us for worship. That's what you created us to do. It is in our DNA to worship. It is a part of our nature to worship. You're going to worship something. You're going to worship something, whether it's the Lord or the world. You're going to worship something, whether it's Jesus or the devil. But you were made for worship. Jesus, let us worship you. 
Let us sit at your feet. Let us learn. Let us be taught. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for these here. They're calling out to you. They're asking for you to help. But as you said in that message to us this morning, have I not said, will I not do? He cares for us. He cares for you. And he will turn it around. But until he does, let's worship him. Hallelujah. 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 Who are like you? Who is like you in all the earth, Lord? Who is like you? Hallelujah. 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 And if some of you got to go, I understand. Some of you got to go home, I understand. You can go home. But let's just sit here. Let's just sit here at his feet. I'm going to shut up talking. I ain't got any more else to say. I'm going to let Jesus speak. Let's just worship Him tonight. Let's just worship Him. Hallelujah. Oh 
Absolutely foolish. Absolutely foolish. But to God, to Jesus, this is just joy to Him. It's just like that song we sing this morning. Your presence is heaven to me. This is what it's like in heaven. I mean, you think you're going to get to heaven, it's not going to be, this is exactly what it's going to be like in heaven. As soon as you see, you know what you're going to do? Oh, boy. You're going to have crowns. You're just going to lay them down. Lord, I didn't come for all this. Pretty sure the hearts cry. Most of you's like my Lord. You don't even have to build me a mansion, Lord. I'll sit here the rest of eternity just to be with you. Hallelujah. Let's pray and we'll dismiss. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this time together. We thank you, Lord, for your presence, your power, and your anointing. We thank you, Lord, that, and we do believe, Lord, that tonight many of these altars, they received a breakthrough. They worshiped you and they, they're going to receive their blessing, their answer prayer. God, I pray you begin to plow our hearts, Lord. Let this church, God, not get caught up in the doing, but let us get caught up, Lord, in praising and worshiping you. Don't ever let this church get the idea that serving is greater than worship. Because Lord, that's, that's the mindset of, of heaven, is worship. Let this house be a house of worship, house of prayer. You said my house should be a house of prayer. Let it be that, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to minister. I pray through some of these stumbling words that these people were blessed. I pray, God, you were given the glory tonight you deserve. Anoint these and bless these and help them on their way home. Lord, we'll get them back here at the appointed time. And Lord, we'll give you the praise and the glory. And it's in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 See you Wednesday night. Hallelujah. Oh, I needed to hear that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Worth the two hours. One? Hallelujah. Didn't want to gas. <laughs> Never do, brother. <laughs>